Let's get into today's Sunday case study. I'm actually going to present the case that I presented this past weekend at the AANS meeting. Um, but this is a 21-year-old female who was a restrained passenger in an auto accident. Uh, she complained of abdominal pain and back pain upon arrival to the emergency department. And um, she was a restrained passenger, meaning she had a lap lap belt on and a shoulder harness on and she had some bruising noted along her uh, lower abdomen so first question is what is that bruising called and what type of injuries is it associated with in trauma patient underwent a trauma scan in the emergency department which means she had a ct of her brain ct of her cervical spine chest abdomen and pelvis which is our typical trauma workup and the patient was found to have some blood in the abdomen and was deemed to be needing to go to the operating room emergently with trauma surgery for exploration. I was called about this patient's CT scan as she was going to the operating room with general surgery. So let's carefully break down this CT scan. Here you see that is the vertebral body. So want to know what's going on there. Here is looking more at the patient's facet joints. So I wanna know what's going on right here. And then here's a different look through a different plane of the CT. So we talked about that, but uh, we wanna look at that right there too. So what's going on with the patient here? So what's the diagnosis? Is this a stable or unstable injury? Meaning does this patient need surgery or can we just put a brace on? And if you think the patient needs surgery, what type of surgery would you recommend? And last but not least, for those first responders that are watching, uh, what would you do with this patient in the field? If you see a patient that was involved in an accident and has some bruising along their lower abdomen, is complaining of back pain, complaining of abdominal pain, what would you worry about? And then what precautions would you take on the way into the hospital? So comment below with any questions about this case, what you think the answers may be and what solutions you may have to this case. And make sure to follow tomorrow as I'll post a video answer. And again, how I do that is I will comment to this video and then link the video response to, the, to, that, uh, to that comment. All right, thanks guys. The answer to the case study for the patient uh, that we discussed yesterday, which is a 21 year old female who was involved in an auto accident. She was a restrained passenger and she came in with this CT scan. So we discussed that she also had some abdominal injuries which required urgent surgical attention by general surgery and was found to have an injury to the colon and so I had to have a bowel resection. Um, and I mentioned that the patient had this bruising along the lower abdomen, um, which is called the seatbelt sign is what I was getting at. And a seatbelt sign is just an injury in which a patient's lap belt can cause them to hyperflex. So if they have a belt restraint here and they get involved in an accident where they flex forward all of a sudden, you can get a forward flexion which can injure the bowels and the spine. There is a 25% chance of a GI injury and a 50% chance of a spinal injury uh, with that type of injury. Now what we see on the CT scan is there is a fracture plane that starts here and goes all the way across the patient's spine and uh, is a fracture all the way across this vertebral body right here. Here is a cartoon picture of it where you see where you have a fracture plane all the way across the whole spine and this is what it looks like front to back. And that type of fracture is called a chance fracture. And that's basically a fracture plane that goes across the entire spine which is a unstable injury that will require surgery. In this case, it did seem to involve the bone only. Um, on the MRI, there was some clear injury all the way across the spine. Um, but in my mind, a 21-year-old patient, the goal of surgery is to preserve as much motion as possible. Now, some surgeons uh, would perform a spinal fusion, um, but that would entail a L1 to L3 fusion. And in this young patient uh, that's 21 years old, fusing two segments of the spine is uh, very, um, very morbid for long-term purposes of movement. So I decided to do a percutaneous fixation and an augmentation of that spinal fracture in order of kind of holding the fracture plane together. So for healing purposes, hopefully long-term it will heal and then we could go back in later and remove the hardware. 
So here is what we did. We placed screws at L1 and L3 and then put this implant through a minimally invasive uh, approach into that vertebral body, which is basically just bone graft. Here you can see the before and after picture. So this is before and this is after. And really you can see that the uh, spine is kind of kyphotic or curved right here. And then over here after surgery, we obtained complete restoration of the patient's normal alignment. So this was done through five tiny little incisions and we can hopefully go back in in about nine to 12 months and remove the hardware and the patient will have complete restoration of their mobility. So hope you learned something on this case study.